Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another video. This is just going to be a short video today. Really just wanted to share my thoughts with you on NATO straps. So I have a confession to make, which is that in the past I've really struggled actually to, to get to like NATOs. That they don't, they've never really worked for me. I've never really found NATOs suitable for any of the watches that I've had in the past. I've looked at some Tudors and some Amigas, uh, and, and as you know, a lot of those watches now come with a NATO strap as standard. Uh, I've looked at them and I thought, yeah, do you know what? I, I'm not sure I want to spend that kind of money on a watch that's got a NATO strap that I can pick up for 25 bucks. Um, so I've always erred away from buying a watch that's come with a NATO. Uh, I've always considered myself to be very much a bracelet kind of guy i love i love bracelets you know and i love amiga bracelets in particular i just think that they make the best bracelet uh, and i'm going to upset some rolex fanboys i know by saying that but i just think that the the amiga bracelets are, are really nicely made and particularly the uh, the older amiga bracelets from the from the 90s and the two th early 2000s when they actually um made a, a bracelet where the actual clasp itself was flush with the links as you can see here it's totally flush it's not it's not proud of the links at all so it sits very very flat on the wrist i love these bracelets and also love the the engraving uh the the omega seamaster professional engraving on these particular clasps so anyway, so it took me a little bit of uh, time to get some NATOs in. I thought, look, I'll give these a try on this new watch because this particular watch is a 2254.50 Neo Vintage Seamaster. It's one of those watches that I've been craving after probably for about five years now. Finally found this one came up quite recently overseas uh, in Japan. And uh, look, I, as soon as I saw it, I thought, yeah, this looks like the condition that I'm looking for. Yeah, the price was on the high side. Uh, but my view is when you're buying a, a watch like this, you know, you don't want to be skimping on the dollars. You need to you need to be paying uh, the right money for the right watch. And that's what I did. So got this watch in a couple of weeks ago. Love it on the bracelet. Thought I'd give it a try on some NATOs. You know, I mean, if you're going to in for a penny, in for a pound. So I bought three or four NATOs. And I have to say, I just think it looks awesome. I've got it right now, as you can see on this particular NATO, which is blue, grey and red stripes. I wasn't expecting it to go very well with this watch because, of course, this particular model's just got a black bezel and a, and a black face. Uh, the only hint of red is just on the seconds hand there. But I love it. I think it works really, really well. And I know that it was going to work really well on the, on the khaki and the green straps here. This particular strap over here, this is this is actually a 22 mil uh, NATO, uh, which I've bought to try. I'm actually going to try this on a Rolex Sea Dweller, just as a comparison. Uh, when I can be brave enough to take the bracelet off of that Sea Dweller, I'm going to put this NATO on just to see what it looks like. But yeah, just like, I thought I'd share my thoughts on this because I've really struggled with NATOs over the years. They just haven't really stayed on the wrist for more than a day when I've bought one on a watch. And I think the realisation that I've come to is that, the, you know, the NATO itself is not the issue. It's the type of watch that you're trying to put it on. And for me, the reason the NATO works so well on this watch for me, uh, for two reasons. One is this is a nice thin watch. You know, this isn't one of those big chunky boy watches that you see these days. A particular Amiga are guilty of this. Uh, they've got some lovely watches now, but they're ever so thick. Uh, which obviously the thicker you go on the actual case size of the watch once you put a couple of layers of this NATO strap underneath the case back there you're, you're starting to get quite proud on the wrist and that's always been a problem for me with the thicker watches so one go for a, a, a nice thin watch uh, if you want to put it on a NATO and the other thing and it may be a little bit controversial is I actually think that uh, NATOs don't work well with watches that have that have got a little bit too much polish and a little bit too much bling. Maybe a ceramic, a shiny ceramic bezel with a shiny dial is not really going to work particularly well on a NATO, which has a very matte, unreflective look to it. So I think that's the reason it works really well on this particular model of watch. And the realisation that I've come to now is that probably the reason I haven't really gone for NATOs in the past is because I just haven't had the right watch uh, to, to go with the NATO and so for me a nice matte aluminium bezel with a nice matte dial 
put it with a NATO, it's probably going to work. And that's the realisation that I've come to today, guys, maybe 10 years later than a lot of you have. But uh, there you go. I just thought I'd show you a quick video just to share my thoughts on NATO straps and, and what my view is on this. Be interesting to see how this 22mm uh, NATO, this is actually a single pass NATO, by the way. Uh, I thought a single pass might work better uh, on a on a sea dweller, which is a very thick watch anyway. I'd uh, be interested to hear what your thoughts are, guys, on the ceramic glossiness versus the matte aluminium and, and whether there's something in that um, in your view as well. Uh, let me know what you think in the, in the comments and look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks, guys.